let's say that the economy of country A is stagnating. It's maybe facing a deflationary crisis. So a central bank tries to print as much money and lower interest rates as much as possible. And an investor can go into country A and borrow in A's currency at a 1% interest rate. Let's also say that in the rest of the world, and in particular in country B, you, one can actually make relatively, or what you perceive as safe investments, at a higher interest rate in, company, in, in country B's currency. And so let's say that you can get a 5% return. So you could imagine some opportunistic investors might say, wow, I could borrow in country A's currency. And so let's say they go into country A, they borrow at 1%, and in particular they borrow they borrow 100, and I won't call them dollars or yens. I'll call them, or anything, or euros or anything else. I'll call them 100 A's, where the, the name of A's currency is an A. So they borrow 100 A's, and let's say the, the, the conversion rate is at right now, at this point in time, 1 A is equal to 2 B's. So they go into currency markets, and then they exchange it for every 1 A, they get 2 B's. So they get exchange it for 200 B's. They exchange it for 200 Bs, and then they go and invest it. They are investing in Bs. So this is they're borrowing in As, they're borrowing in As, and they're investing in Bs. And so what would happen? Well, they're going to get 5% on their money in Bs. So 5% of 200, they're going to get 10 Bs. Let's say that's per year. So they're going to get 10 Bs in interest every year. And then they can convert that. They can convert those 10 Bs, if we assume the exchange rate holds constant, and that is a big assumption, they can convert that to 5 As based on the same exchange rate. And so that will be 5 As, 5 As. But they only have to pay 1 A in interest. So let me divert some over here. So they only have to pay 1 A in interest. And so they're just going to get 4 As they're going to get 4 A's per year. If we assume constant exchange rate, they're going to get 4 A's a year for free, assuming that they could continue to do this. And then they could take those 4 A's and convert them to B's or whatever other currency they want. So they could just, you could say they're getting 4 A's for free every year, or they're getting 8 B's per year every year. And this little process, this little trade, this little perceived arbitrage that's going on right over here, this is called the carry trade. This is called the carry trade. And you might think about, well, where, where would this break down? Well, the main area where this would break down is while you are borrowing in A and then investing in B, if A's currency appreciates, if A's currency appreciates, or especially relative to B's currency. Because then what happens, even though you have this interest rate discrepancy, and even though you feel like you're getting a lot of 10 Bs, those 10 Bs are going to give you fewer and fewer As if A keeps appreciating. Or another way to think about it is, you're going to, in terms of Bs, even though you think you only owe 1% interest, A is also going to appreciate. So in terms of Bs, you're going to owe more and more Bs every year if A appreciates. Now what's worked out in the carry trade, or at least the most famous of the carry trades, were in starting in the mid-90s, People started borrowing in Japan because they had low interest and then investing other places like the US and especially other places like Iceland, is that the more people do this, so you can imagine, if a lot of people keep doing this and it becomes kind of a big herd effect, what happens? You have a bunch of people borrowing in A and then converting it to B. So they're taking this currency and converting it to the magenta currency. And if that happens, then you actually have the opposite effect. Then you get a benefit on top of the interest rate discrepancy, because that means the demand for B's currency goes up and demand for A's goes down. And this is essentially what happened relative to Japan and a lot of the rest of the world when Japan had its lowest, lower interest rates all the way until uh, really about 2008.